Well, Dangote Cement has started the exportation of clinker to neighboring African countries with a first export of 27,800 metric tons to Senegal. This move is expected to place Nigeria as one of the leading clinker exporters in the world. Well, joining me now to look at this uh, move and, of course, other developments in the uh, commodities market space uh, is the CEO of um, financial derivatives company, Mr. Bismarck Rowani. Thank you very much, Mr. Rowani for joining us on the show. Yeah, good morning, Chibizu. All right, just before we get into the cement industry, what are those um, e economic issues that are really driving uh, the commodities market at this time? First of all, let's uh, take a step back and look at what's happening to our growth. Uh, the Economic Sustainability Plan, Committee Plan, is suggesting that we could have a negative growth of minus 4.4% this year. If that comes out to be realistic, or if that comes out to be the, the truth, then we are going to have a situation where from 1.87 in Q1, to annualize it at minus 4. Point, that means that we're going to have almost minus 5 and minus 6 in Q2 and in Q3 and Q4. Therefore, what does that mean? Now, but luckily, the oil price projection in that uh, scenario was based on $28 a barrel. Today we are seeing Brent at $40 a barrel. But Nigeria is having to comply with the production cuts. So having said that, you, in your last conversation with commercial partners, you talked about exchange rate, and the exchange rate passed through into inflation. I think it's important to understand that uh, there's, nothing, there's no other option we have but to unify the exchange rates and to, to, to eliminate the distortions in the, uh, the markets due to multiple exchange rate practices. Our lenders are going to insist on that. Our donor partners are going to insist on that. And it's also good for our economy. So I want, I'm just laying the context mm. for what's going to happen to the commodity. Because when you have an exchange rate unification and an adjustment of that magnitude, mm. then it will feed through into uh, domestic prices, especially for those that have high import content. But also it makes your own exports more competitive because you just talked about clinker and also we are going to be exporting cement, right? So I want you to see, one, the oil markets, two, the exchange rate adjustment, which is inevitable, even, in, even though in stages, and domestic price changes and also our export competitiveness. When you now understand this, then you now come back to the cement industry as, as a whole. So <coughs> talking about this um, exchange rate and, of course, all these um, economic um, development, how are they playing out in the cement industry and, uh, of course, the performance of the players there? Let's, let's uh, go back. In Q1, Q4, well, the economy grew about 2.25%. The cement industry actually grew by about 1.6%. Uh, so also in Q2. In other words, the um, you know, Q1, Q4 and Q1, the cement industry has been underperforming the, um, the GDP as a whole. But what is driving this? If you look at the, the growth rate in construction and the growth rate in the cement industry, they are almost identical. Well, but what we are seeing now is that the stimulus package and trying to revamp the economy means there's going to be a boost in construction. And once there's a boost in construction, then you'll see a higher demand for cement locally and also a higher rate of growth of the industry and the com companies in there. Now, why do I say this? Yesterday, the federal government announced the con possible concessioning of 10 highways in Nigeria. If you notice, both along the Bagada Expressway and the Oroshoki, Apapa, Oshodi Expressway, there's a substitution of bitumen for cement. If you look at in the intercity, inner city roads all over Lagos and everywhere, you are beginning to see interlocking blocks being used rather than bitumen and coal roads. So we are seeing the demand for cement is driven by construction industry, affordable housing, and the replacement of bitumen roads 
by concrete roads. I think and that's a very, very important development. I think you should mm. bear that in mind. All right. Now, so Nigeria, up until recently, was one of the world's um, largest bulk um, importers of cement. Now, with Dangote cement exportation of uh, uh, clinker, does it mean we are now self-sufficient? Uh, First and foremost, Nigeria is self We are now self-sufficient. Mm. The total production in, the, uh, in Nigeria is about almost 40 million tons. Dangote alone has... 20, is producing 29 million tons. The second is Lafarge, which is about 10, 10 million tons. And then you have Boa, who has about 8 million, 8, 8 million tons. So to all intents and purposes, Dangote is dominant. It has 70% of the industry. So because they invested substantially in Abajana, Ibeche, and uh, the other, in, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the other locations, you will find that uh, they have actually, they were game changers. In other words, made Nigeria from being a net importer to becoming a net exporter. Dangote exports to at least nine or 10 African countries. We're just starting off with Senegal with Klinka. Mm. It has an export terminal, right? But it's also, it, the point is that the pandemic is going to reduce growth across Africa. So I think Africa is going to report about minus 2 to minus 3%. Nigeria is going to report maybe minus 4.4% according to the ESC plan. And therefore, whilst cement is growing and Dangote is growing, they would have to bear in mind that the, defense, the cement industry is usually defensive and to a large extent cyclical. So what's going to happen in other markets, especially because we know the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is going to kick in, mm. in sometime next year. So what the Dangotes of the world uh, are going to be doing, the leading players, is that one, they will be producing, two, they'll be exporting, and three, they may have to significantly consider providing finance for less, uh, less um, for the countries that don't have that much money, uh, have the less developed African countries. So in other words, if you, are, if you are exporting to Senegal, you will export to Senegal, but you have to give Senegal some credit. And that's what I'm saying, that because Dangote has the balance sheet and has the stamina and the strength to be able to support this. Uh, I don't know about the others, but even the others also are doing very well. Now, with this, with this export, what would that mean for intra-regional trade within you know, Africa? ECOWAS, ECOWAS country particularly. Well, if you look at ECOWAS country, uh, countries, you, t you take Nigeria, Ghana, and Ivory Coast, all the others are maybe Senegal to a large extent, but all the others are pretty much uh, fringe players. Uh, the total, a country like Gambia, uh, Gambia's GDP is not as big as that of Ikeja, right? So uh, while, while you look at the intra-African trade, or inter-African trade, as you may say, you, you will see that uh, the likes of Dangote, that's what I'm saying, they have to not only produce, they have to financially support, and they have to actually send some technical support to those countries who are going to have to be migrating from normal concrete houses to affordable housing to, uh, to interlocking blocks, right? To all that substitution towards concrete, right? And that's, uh, I think that's an important development uh, for Dangote. The dominant uh, Dangote, for example, and Boa and Lafarge are not just Nigerian conglomerates. They are now becoming regional multinationals. Okay, now looking at... Um that we have harsh operating environment, really. Yeah. And uh, Dangote Cement, of course, looking at the results, posted quite an impressive result in both um, 2019 uh, financial year and, of course, the first quarter. What strategies do you think this company has continued to really put out there to maintain its share price? Its share, you know? I think the first thing is audacity to, to be able to invest well in advance. You're taking a long-term view. So you say, for example... The investment in Obajana and Ibeche were done four or five years ago when the exchange rate of the Naira was like 169, right? Now they're reaping the benefits when the exchange rate is almost 400. So good, you know, good capitalization, cost reduction, being strategic and having the, the boldness and the courage to invest ahead of time. So what you are seeing today is reaping of the benefits of past investments and the the boldness to make those decisions at that time. What's going to happen in the future? Basically, they will continue to reap this because 
the replacement cost of that investment, which was maybe $10, $11 billion, today is about $25 billion. And that's why you find that people like uh, Dangote, uh, Boa, and Lafarge, they also now begin to rank in the Forbes list of the wealthiest people because that's what's happening. But having said that, we are noticing an, a, a reduction in the EBITDA. And the impact of the pandemic on the business this year it's not going to, we cannot write that off. That's, that's significant. For example, in the first quarter, I think they did only four, uh, four million tons or something like that. If you multiply that by four, that comes to 60 million tons. But we are hoping that that will pick up because they, are, they have all these road projects between in Ogun State. They have road projects in Lagos where they are, uh, in, in, in return for tax credits, they are building all of this. So there's, uh, there's a lot of upside. But I will caution that in the year 2020, just like the whole of the country and the whole of the world and industry, we are going to see some very, very weak numbers in 2020. But the economic value of the company and the investments, are going to, you are going to see the benefits of this more in 2021 and thereafter. Mm. All right. Now, what can you tell us about Dangote Cement buyback? Uh, the details of the plan haven't been made you know, uh, well thought out or clear to the, the market. Do you see a situation where the buyback exercise could really be broken down into... No, usually, usually when a company buys back its shares, it's because, there's a, they have, first of all, they have a lot of reserves, they have a lot of cash, and it's a good thing for the investors. So if you're buying back the shares, right, it means that the shares will appreciate in value, and those who, who are holding it are going to... So in anticipation of the buyback, what people do is to buy more, right? So, but when you look at, you know, in the end, when you look at Dangote uh, industry, the performance of Dangote cement, one, you must understand that Nigeria, which is a major country, is a country whose growth is going to depend, to a large extent, on civil construction and works. We have 197,000 kilometers of roads in Nigeria, and these roads have to be maintained. The, I, I just talked about the concessioning of 10 roads. The roads, new roads have to be built. The roads were all designed for the whole path, which is from the north to the south. We don't have horizontal paths uh, that go across from west to east across the country. All of those things have to be built. There are 774 local governments. There are 36 states plus uh, one in the federal capital territory. All of these governments have road projects. Even the private sector are looking for, uh, have high demand for uh, civil works. So I think that not just Dangote, but even Lafarge and Boa have a great point. But because Dangote is a dominant player and has invested significantly in, in, in uh, capital, you know, capital intensive areas, including a power station, uh, satellite towns, and all of that, the true value of the company is far in excess of what the financial values actually uh, suggest at this point in time. So what's the sector outlook, uh, particularly with this um, COVID-19? Well, the truth is that COVID-19, at worst, will be a one to one and a half year phenomenon. After that, it's over. The, the true the stock price is a uh, present value of future earnings. This company and these companies have invested significantly, right? And they begin to reap the benefits. As, we, as Nigeria adjusts its price in one, cost-reflected tariffs, which kicks in in two weeks, and Nigeria adjusts its currency to, to, to unify the exchange rates, as Nigeria removes subsidies on petroleum products, you'll find that those companies that had invested way before now are going to be reaping the benefits. So the outlook, one, because construction is a stimulus that is going to drive this, bring this economy out of the, the recession that we are, we are in already. And because construction is inextricably tied to cement, and there are only three players, and the three players, and one is dominant, which has about 70% of the market. Therefore, the outlook for cement, the outlook for construction, and the outlook for Dangote all look bright, but not in 2020, but more in 2021 and beyond. All right, thank you very much, Chair, for your time, Mr. Rwani. So Ms. Macrowani is the Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company.